Hi everyone and welcome to our third episode of our uh, training podcasts. My name's Amir and I'm the training lead here at the RPS and hopefully, fingers crossed, you're preparing for your first progress review. So it seems timely to focus on this aspect of the training review for today's podcast. I'm joined by um, Khalid and Krish again and I'll uh, just pass over to them to introduce themselves. Krish, shall we, shall we start by yeah, a short introduction from yourselves? Yeah. So uh, my name is Krish. I am a recently qualified pharmacist and I am currently back at University of Huddersfield, um, complete my PhD in um, using novel biopolymers uh, for targeted uh, stomach cancer um, drug therapy. Thanks, Krish. Khalid? Yeah, my name is uh, Khalid Khan. I'm the training lead for foundation training at Iman Healthcare, which is a chain of community pharmacies. Uh, and I'm also training program director at Health Education England uh, against Foundation Year Training. Thanks, guys. And in this short um, podcast, what I really want to do is I want to discuss progress reviews um, and how you should effectively prepare for them. I suppose it'd be quite relevant to discuss what supervisors are looking for um, and how we can help our listeners with one of these key key milestones. So we know that during this during this year. Your progress reviews need to be conducted at 13, 26 and 39 weeks of the training period. And during these weeks, you're going to sit down with your uh, supervisors and you're going to discuss, I suppose, your, your progress over, the, over, those, over that designated time. Chris, how did you go about preparing for your first, your first progress review? I think the way I went, uh, went about it was I kind of listened to what other... what. Um, Khalid kind of touched upon it in a training in a training day about how the what the reviews are like and how to go about it. So the way I went about it is how kind of he suggested. And that was to just be open minded. Um, don't put a lot of pressure on on the review. You know, it's just to touch base. The 13 minute review is to just touch base with your supervisors, see how you're getting along. I think sometimes uh, trainees may get a bit, you know, flustered by the review because they're expected to take off a lot of stand, uh, a lot of learning outcomes, and it's not it's not going to happen where you tick off say sixty percent of your learning outcomes because the first thirteen weeks, in my opinion, are to really settle in, establish how you're going to do things, um, and when you're going to do them. So. When I did my 13-week review, I kind of just prepared by just going in open-minded. I didn't, I had the standards out on a sheet. Luckily, I was on VQ Manager, which is kind of an online portal where we put our standards on. I looked at them and thought, okay, um, you know, I'm doing well here. Maybe I, I, and there were some which was zero, and I wasn't bothered about those, you know, things like the audit I knew were going to come on later on in the year. And those some like, um, you know, the first aid, things like that. Again, it may come on later in the year. It's not something I have to focus on right now. But there were some that were on my mind, you know, things like accuracy checking. Um, I, I, I didn't want to complete the accuracy checking one just yet, my 13 week, but I want to, want to get my hands in it and because that's what I will be doing. So when I went to my 13 week review, my, my, my tutors and, and myself, luckily, we were all on the same page. They knew where my weaknesses were. I knew where my weaknesses were, as well as my strengths. The way we went about it were, um, I had very minimal things ticked off. I, I'd say I had less than 10% of my standards ticked off. And I wasn't, I wasn't really worried about it, to be fair, um, because I knew that in the end, I'd have them all ticked off. I knew the type of person I was. Um, I think my tutors knew the type of person I was from my 13 review. I knew I would get them all ticked off. So as long as you know that in the end and with the support of your tutors that they're going to be ticked off, don't worry about the 13-week review. It is just for everyone to get together, establish a plan, see how to go forward, what opportunities they can give you. So if there are opportunities that you, you want, so... For me, in GP, one of them was more patient-facing things. There was the COVID clinics that were going on, so I suggested to my tutor, can I, say, do my vaccination course in COVID and flu? 
and can I go and do that? I can take some standards off. That was one thing I did. It was a brilliant experience, something that, you know, I suggested worked well and ticked off those standards very easily. Um, also did a few consultations, so again, ticked off standards. But going into that with a plan is really important, in my opinion. You know, don't just listen to what your tutors are saying. Also, give your opinion on what you want to do as well. It's all about, as self-centred as it may sound, it's all about you. The whole point of your tutors being there and you being there is because of you. And that is one thing that you need to say selfish very quickly. They're not there for themselves. They're there for you. So make sure you're, you're actually showing interest in your development because if you're not showing interest, no one's going to show interest because at the end of the day, it's you taking off your standards, going, being eligible to do the exam and becoming a pharmacist the following year. Um, and it sounds daunting, but that's what it is. So yeah, just keep open-minded and just be proactive in that review and establish what you want. We, we hear that a lot. So we always hear people say, we've got three progress reviews and I need to tick off 33% at each one. Mm. And every time I hear that, I'm like, that's, that's not right. That's yeah. not um, How did you have, do you have anything more to add on that? No, some really good points. And that, that final point is really key about it, it, it being about you, this review. And it's one of the few times in the year when you will have hopefully your, your supervisor's undivided attention because through the rest of the year, they're going to be dragged around doing all sorts of things. So this is one time we've got to sit down and talk to you. I think the key is to make the most of that time that you have with them by preparing in advance. So all your evidences that you've, you've, you've written up, get them signed off in advance. Not You don't be dumping lots of stuff on your, on your supervisor Say here, read this so I can prove that I've met that learning outcome. Get the evidence signed off in advance, you know, get, get a couple of them maybe each week, etc. So that the conversation, and that's what the review is, it's a conversation about your performance can be had. And it can be a fairly brief one, but it'd be quite concentrated. So you talk about basically what you're doing well, where you can improve. And ideally, if you can lead that conversation, that's better as a trainee. So, you, you know, if you can show your your um, your supervisor that you're aware of your weaknesses and your strengths, and you can maybe suggest some, like Chris, some activities or some remedies to, 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 to plug those gaps, that shows a level of maturity. It shows a level of responsibility. It shows that you've really reflected and thought about it. Um, the worst thing you can do is go to a review, uh, get some feedback from your supervisor and, and just fall apart. You know, and, and, and I've had that, you know, I've, I've, I've sat in reviews, so we've had, we've had tears uh, and it wasn't the supervisor's intention to upset the trainee, they're just trying to be honest, um, but the trainee's taking it very personally. So don't take things personally. This is about identifying your gaps um, and, and remedying them. And to think about, you know, the, you know, how many do I need to get signed off? Completely irrelevant. Uh, and, and the last thing, you know, the trainees do it all the time. They'll go to review or they'll go to review and their, their friends had the review a few days before and they've asked them, how many of you have signed off? Oh, I've had 26 signed off. All right, I need 26. And then they'll get 10 signed off and then they get really upset because, oh, I've failed. Whereas their friend might have had lots of, again, lots of experience in pharmacy before they started at a different level. Maybe their supervisor is a bit soft. You know, it's, there's lots of different variables here. So the numbers really don't matter until you get towards the end of the year when, yeah, okay, they do matter at the beginning. Um, that's not what to focus on. Focus on, uh, on, on what your situation is and have in your mind a bit of an action plan in place. Uh, because at the, at the end of that review, you need to have an action plan. It has to be agreed by both parties. And ideally, it should be the trainee who drafts the action plan and that plan gets signed off by the supervisor. I think one thing to touch on about what Khaled said about the learning outcomes. Um, if, like I said, I got about 10, less than 10% signed off in my first review, I, I, I wasn't really bothered because I knew that if, if I had 60% signed off, that is technically saying that I am 60% of the way to become a pharmacist. I knew I was not. Um, and I think one way to look at the learning outcomes is not just look at them as individual learning outcomes that, okay, I can talk to a patient, brilliant, because I'm sure that other people can talk to a patient if they're given that many opportunities. When you get that 100% of learning outcomes being ticked off, that is your supervisor saying to you that you are, in my eyes, worthy of being a pharmacist. And that is what the learning outcomes are, in my opinion. If, you, if I had less than 10% of them signed off, that is my supervisor saying to me, you are on your way to becoming a pharmacist, but there is a lot of work to go. And you will come to your, I believe it's, is it 39 a week? 
review and that's the final review before you, you're given the okay for the exam and you'll see it your 13 hour week review that you know standards will be getting ticked off your 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 tutor your supervisor will be like yeah he's done that he's done that and you'll be thinking wow uh, where has all this come from <laughs> has something happened but that is that is your supervisor looking at you as a in a, a holistic view um at that 39 week and saying yes i can imagine this person being a pharmacist now you know he wasn't at week 13 week 26 he was getting over week 39 yes he he is a pharmacist so look at the learning outcomes not as individual look at it as a big picture and you're kind of like a jigsaw puzzle you're getting a piece and you're putting it through and in the end you've got a full jigsaw and that's what you'll be at week 39 if you take on the feedback reflect on yourself honestly um about what you're capable of what you're not capable of and establishing that relationship with your supervisors to really trust them trust in your own training and what they have to say about you um as, in as being as a pharmacist Chris, thank you so much. It's probably a good opportunity now just to, to wrap up and discuss some of the top tips that you've both um, mentioned. So for me to summarise, I think what you both said was really, this is an opportunity for you, for you to be open-minded for both the training and for the supervisor to have like almost like a no-holds-barred type conversation where mm. there is no pressure and really it's like a checkpoint. So rather than this being called a review, it could really be called a checkpoint where you're having an open and honest conversation with each other to discuss how, how your time has been. And at the 13 week review, it'd be quite good to, to prepare in advance so that the training knows what they're going to discuss and that the supervisor has some time to be able to um, reflect upon what is done and what you said within that, within that time. It is the trainee's time. So, I suppose what I'm hearing is it would be really good to, to try and have that conversation away from the dispensary. I don't know, Halid and Chris, if you guys would agree with that. Um, yeah. But if you guys could have that conversation away from the dispensary, uninterrupted, where you can discuss your progress. And the final point would be something that Chris touched upon, which was really your, your check-in is an opportunity to see how you're progressing as a qualified pharmacist. So you don't have to have 33 signed off, 33% signed off. You don't have to have the same number as your colleagues signed off. It's quite a personal review. So the review is a marker and a checkpoint for, for you. Um, I want you to thank my, my speakers today. So Chris, thanks for your time. And Khalid, thanks for your time. And I wanted to thank our listeners for tuning in and listening to the podcast um please listen out for the next one um i've been amir from the rps thanks